Welcome back, everybody, and welcome to episode seven. Episode seven is Rob Roy, and he's going to take us through the function of the Rolls Royce Merlin Magnetos. Um, the work that he's done on these things is absolutely beautiful. I really hope you enjoy this episode. Before we get started, I just want to explain something here <laughs> because this is a Rolls Royce Merlin engine, and the Typhoon was powered by an Aper Saber. So I've posted a couple pictures and little segments on this engine on various social media platforms and I always get the same question, well, are you going to put that in the Typhoon or um, what are you doing with the Merlin? And the answer is a little bit vague right now, but what I can tell you is that um, we've got a group of very experienced aerospace professionals here. We've got mechanics, we've got electricians, and we have uh, structures like this guy. And um, what we can do with our skills in lieu of donations, but we do need donations, <laughs> financial contributions, is to put together projects like this. And we had an opportunity, the stars aligned, and um, we were able to acquire a Merlin that we're going to use as barter material to seriously advance the rebuild of Hawker Typhoon JP843. So you'll have to stick with us on this one and see what happens. It's not going to stay with us. It's not going to power the Typhoon. Um, but rest assured, I think you all are all going to be very impressed. Uh, in the meantime, here's uh, the video that I shot with Rob and his explanation of the, uh, the Merlin Magnetos and uh, the beautiful work that he's done on them. don't know how many of you have ever seen a uh, magneto all in bits and pieces so we've left the one side complete the other side we've broken it down into all the uh, all the components that make up a magneto so you start off with this one here this is the frame of the magneto the solid part and it's got two iron core uh, side frames in here and the magneto uh, coil of course is sitting across here uh, this is what the coil looks like the output to the spark plug comes off of here and to the uh, to the rotor the magneto, magneto rotor and it runs through this little carbon um, piling right here and then distributes it out to to the points here where it picks up on the rotor cap sort of thing. So every time the rotor goes by one of the pins in the rotor cap, that's where it, it takes the spark out to the plug or sort of thing. So this one is the is the um, coil here. This one is a shower of sparks. So it follows the th the uh, the initial ignition point by seven degrees so and complete and provides a continuous shower of spark uh, to just get the fuel going if it's cold. So and that's a starting? That's a starting thing, yeah. It's a starting thing. We should actually took it out of the box. but uh, So anyways, it's, it's a four-pole rotor. That's what's in here. So it provides four sparks per turn of the rotor. And uh, it's got ball bearings on each end of it, sort of thing. So we'll slowly assemble the thing as we go so you guys can see. So it goes through there like that, then the end bearing cap, and of course it's not all bolted together. So the end bearing cap goes in there. It's, it's hard to get them, the, uh, the, the shaft lined up perfect because the, they make the uh, magnet is so strong. So just pop it back out here, it's not all the way in. There, so, so there we got a shell now and uh, we can show you uh, with a multimeter here how uh, how this thing works. I just got to get the thing on here. So now this is without without the contact points being being in uh, thing here. It's just to show you that we do have continuity through this coil. Is when I spin this, it'll. It'll show up on the multimeter here. So you can see it's generating power just by the magnets going by the two pilings here on there. So you got a good mag. So now you can also see it here. 
as you try to turn this thing, you'll see how it, the magnet will pull it back. It just shows you how free that the armature is in this one here. So every time one of those four poles cross this here, it creates a magnetic induction through the side poles, through the coil, which generates electricity. Now what happens when, when this whole system is together with a set of points, when you cross the pole like that and the breaker gap opens, it collapses the field, which generates electricity through a smaller winding on the outside that actually makes a spark. So you're going from what you see here at 120 volts here to 25,000 off the pin there to the spark plug. Wow. Just by the spark, just by the thing collapsing, yeah, like that. So anyways, then the, the next part of the whole plan is this here goes on this way. I just put it on. I'm not going to push it right on tightly, but just to get it lined up here and drop it on. So that goes in there. And then this gear here goes in, in the, into here. Now that's what actually drives the, uh, drives the rotor as it's turning, is that that small gear is turning the large gear, as you can see it turning there. So every time, every time this thing collapses, the spark comes off either the inside track, because you've got an A and B bank. Uh, Which is, each of these, one is Each a, one, one of those, B. yeah, each one of those is an A and B bank. So there's, that's why the two tracks are offset. This one's out farther than that one, because it's on the inside. So it's producing sparks on both sides of this coil and out to the 12, 12 cylinders or 12 spark plugs here. And uh, so there's two mags, one on each side. So that's that part of it there. Then the next part of it that happens here now is this goes in and this is the, this is the spark plug points that actually uh, work the ignition that fits on there like that. You got your set of points on here, and uh, this is your advance for uh, for full advance or for zero advance. And then of course, you got a cap that goes on over top of that, and there's a set of straps that go over top to hold that on. So the next thing is, is this this assembly here goes on this way. And this guy's in here to hold that on, thread into the, the center here. So that's that part of it. And then uh, on the back here, there's two, there's a double cover and there's an oil seal that goes in underneath here to stop the engine oil from getting into the mag magneto. And then there's another cover that goes over here to seal that up. And then this is the drive spline that actually drives it into the engine. Is, uh, is this thing here and that's where you can set when you set your uh, magnetos up to give it the proper spark advance to get them lined right up with the proper cylinder oh that, oops, I, oh, there you go that's uh, that's the drive spline of it there sort of thing and uh, the only other, next thing would be is the cover if I can get that uh, drive spline on it and the cover just goes over like that, fastens it together. Um, the ground for, from the magnet to ground them out when you shut the engine off is it re goes up in here and it's just a direct ground to uh, back to the frame here so that it, there's not generating any more power to make sparks sort of thing. So that's how that works. And you're saying that's yeah. directly connected to the intake or the uh, sorry the um, ignition switch? Ignition switch yeah they actually the ignition switch, is all it is, is a ground. It's not really anything. The power is all generated in here. Okay. So all you're doing to stop your, your output here to your spark plugs is you ground the internal voltage to, to anything on the case. Okay. And that just stops the collapse of the thing. Then the top fitting here is, I can't get this one out, but that's where the shower sparks go in there to, uh, to help starting on cold weather. That's where you're... You just flip a switch and then you want to grab that out of the box there. You can pull. Okay. Oh. This is a condenser. Yeah, no, it's just a spark coil, a vibrating nope. spark coil that uh, happen to have. So what you do is this one. This takes 12 volts on the top here, and it's just a vibrator that makes continuous sparks, and the coil wire goes in here and over to there. 
So when you push the button and make this vibrate, you've got a continuous shower of sparks going on to the uh, rotor wheel. And it, and it sparks have absolute no relation to no the No relation to what the ignition is actually doing. This is just helping you start the, the engine when it's cold and, and burn the fuel. So this is like seven degrees behind the act, actual ignition spark sort of thing, yeah. The seven degree lag behind on it to give you enough uh, juice to make her fly. So what happens is that this is the, uh, this is the right hand mag. This one here, we got it backwards again, but then this is the, uh, the left hand. And they both run this direction. They're both running that direction. So that's the um, rotor wheels that actually put the spark out. There's the lead and lag. And both of them, the, the, um, sp the actual contact points are on the opposite side because they're turning in, they're turning in both in the same direction. This, they both turn forward like that. So that's why on that side, the, the coil is there, the plug is on this side and on the, this side it's backwards, yeah. How long have we been working on these ones? And when I say we, I mean you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I took these home about six weeks ago because they were just, I should have actually brought the other one back to show you what kind of shape. These rotors were all locked inside, they were, they were rusted up, so uh, they wouldn't turn at all. I've had to rebuild it, redo the bearings inside, all new bearings in there, and, uh, and uh, polish them all up so they look neat, going to look neat against the black engine, so they should turn out really well. well they look beautiful. Yeah. And they, for me, the structures guy, they, they do things on this. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the limit of my knowledge. Yeah. Well, that's, that little meter there wouldn't take the 25K that's going to come off those things when they're ready to go. So basically, this one here that we just had apart, it's all ready to go back together. I just wanted to leave it like that so you guys could see it in pieces and how it actually goes together because I'm sure lots of you haven't really seen that part of it. So that's uh, pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of uh, magic smoke and mirrors or anything like that in it. It's just a, a straight magneto and... Uh, and these, these two here should do the trick to, uh, to light the fire in this thing. So it's just one step closer in the whole program, and we're making headway. Well, and how many, do we have four or five? Four. Four. <laughs> we got four of them. It took four magnetos four to magnetos build. Four magnetos to make, yeah. to make this uh, one, uh, two, I should say, yeah. Yeah, so there was all kinds of pieces that, uh, two of the armatures you couldn't do anything with. They were just solid blob of steel. Yeah, because they, uh, I think some of them are underwater at one point. So, but we managed to salvage them anyways, and uh, I think they're going to work all right. There, you know, put out good voltage. That one there, if you spin that one there, you could show 200 on the clock if you spun it hard enough. So, that's pretty good for uh, having those uh, contact points because yeah. it's not collapsing the secondary field to generate the high voltage. So. And I varnished all the inside of the cases and the inside of these covers and everything has all been varnished too, so there's no sparks jumping out to the aluminum casing. This coil here was the one that came from Australia. That coil, that's where it came from, and, and the one in here was the original one that was good. Well, thanks so much, Rob. I really appreciate that. It's uh, well beyond me, so it's always interesting to hear, and I'm sure everybody that watches our videos will really enjoy that too. So yeah. thank you very much. No problem. I think we can all agree those magnetos are absolutely beautiful. Rob really knows what he's doing here and uh, they're going to look magnificent when they're paired up with this gloss black <laughs> uh, Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. Uh, stay tuned for episode 8 which uh, I'm going to answer a couple questions from the shrinking and stretching videos that I've done previously. There's a lot of common questions where I miss some of the details and I'd like to make sure that everybody has a clear understanding of what that is. Uh, in addition to these questions and answers I'm going to run through our fixtures and the work that we've done on those as well as the uh, status of the project to date and the progress that we've made. So stay tuned. I look forward to uh, having you guys follow along and I look forward to answering some questions for you. Take care guys.